I think SMU might be the most delusional fan base in the entire mm. country as they believe, SMU now believes that they become a power in college football because of the way they're able to raise money from donors. They are having to pay their own way <laughs> into the power conference level because no one wants them. Like This is like you go to the, the, to the lunch table. It's like, oh, that's where the jocks sit. And you definitely are not one of those jocks. And you come up and you're like, uh, guys, I could pay each of you one hundred dollars to sit at this table, and, and I got a pool too. You can use that. <laughs> yeah, it's in so- ground. You're not gonna believe it. <laughs> then, then, then everyone's like, "Well, we do like money, so I guess you could pay us to be here." Um, and then immediately, the best two jocks at the table, Florida State and Clemson, are like, "No, no, no, I don't we like that." We are leaving money that the much. table. We are leaving. It's not enough money for us to say our parents are rich. <laughs> Um, they have raised, SMU uh, has raised $159 million for athletics in the last year for their move to the ACC. And they're just like underground. Let's sell T-shirts and do a bake <laughs> sale uh, and not tell anybody what's baked into the cookies just to go to the ACC. Um, and I love that the SMU accounts on social media are like, oh, my gosh, you know, everybody is talking about TV revenue and stuff. Watch out. We're, we got way more money than Big 12 teams because we raised it ourselves. And that's just not what revenue in college football is. It's that's really not, not what sustainable revenue is. It's it's just not. And it's funny because, like, Baylor had kind of an issue, actually, in the early days of NIL because – they had gone on like this 10 year fundraiser for all these new facilities, like the the McLean stadium that you see in the Foster pavilion and a couple of huge buildings on campus, everything. And it's like, man, it's pretty tough to go and ask your donors again. After all of that, there's only so many of the Mark and Paula herds that you can go and every school has them right. That we can go and ask. And SMU just did all of that in a year. Yeah. (laughs) Which is great. That's awesome. But look, at the end of the day, a major conference still found Houston more marketable than you were, found it to be a better, more viable, stable option to add to their conference than they thought SMU was. SMU of University Park, not Dallas. Don't let them fool you. It is pretty close, though. Um, Can I tell you quickly a delusional SMU fan story that I ran into personally a few months ago? Um, I would like to tell you that more people are watching South Alabama versus Eastern Michigan than they are watching SMU and Tulane. Love that. Just like, love that. Oh, Harding and Colorado School of the Mines is on. Hmm. I saw the I saw them on the Sickos committee. I'm in. Yeah, um, I'll watch that over SMU. Uh, that just like it, their TV viewership is not is not great. You're going to love this, though, because we've seen this SMU delusion firsthand. This was me flying out of my hometown of Boston right after Christmas. Sorry, Um, sorry, sorry. Really quick. It was SMU Navy. They got 76,000 viewers right behind Texas State and South Alabama. You know how many people are in the Navy? It was like a national fan base. Not only can you not feel people that love the water, like you know, there are more people watching the Savannah Bananas on YouTube than an SMU football game on ESPN. Onward, that is a lot, by the way. Um, So I was I was on a plane leaving Boston shortly after the Wasabi Fenway Bowl that SMU lost to to the Boston College Eagles, and there were there were one or two players who were like there with their families and a couple of SMU fans. They were all talking in line, Southwest flight. And this guy was like, yeah, but like, that wasn't a real field. How are you guys supposed to win on? That wasn't a real football field. Yeah. And I'm like, this is incredible content. These guys are about to go to the ACC. And let me tell you, as someone who has experienced it going home for years, this is breaking news. There are teams in the ACC that are better than Boston College. Oh. Not a real field. (laughs) I love it, dude. SMU, they just, they can't. They can't just be normal. They can't. Yeah. They have to do crap like this, man. I love it. They're so delusional. I want to take you back. And, and again, field. what I think is is nuts. <laughs> That's why we blew a 14-point lead to BC. SMU fans in the comments are like, well, well, you don't understand. One of the most prestigious educational universities in the world with rich history. And when the football program was cut due to the death penalty, SMU was set back 40 years. Like there's going to be a whole conglomerate of SMU fans pouring right. that into. Which, into by this. the way, those but what things get- are mostly true, but they'll also like 
they'll also be like big 12 not good enough for us you know they'll do that same thing like anyway, baylor so. in essence got the death penalty in basketball they had like five guys that worked at a mcdonald's locally they put together in 2003 to create a basketball team and in essence had that for like four years and essentially got it in football with kevin Steele. for being honest yeah yeah uh <laughs> they they, hired him. SMU is not the only one to go through some dark times um i just so those people that are you know screaming that uh, the, oh, they're they're you know you're avoiding the the big stuff. A uh, TV revenue is what pushes college football. We know that uh, college football playoff revenue is driven by TV revenue. SMU, this is late in the season. And by the way, SMU was not bad at football last year. Like they want they want you to think every year they're a playoff contender. Mm-hmm. SMU played Rice, and I'm going to take you back to 1981. It's the SMU Mustangs, the Rice Owls. It's like a top 15 matchup, probably. Like Everybody's got their eyes glued to it. Um, In 2023, instead, on ESPNU, mind you, at 7.30 p.m., I cannot give you anything better. 29 thousand viewers do you understand how many how many bars and restaurants exist in america that just have espn you on all the time there are more people watching locked on big 12 daily than watch a 7 30 prime time espn you game between smu and rice it was beat out by princeton and dartmouth hell yeah the same very week. Notably thinking- huge schools with great alumni bases that are way into football and some football crazy regions. Come on, Drake, give, cut them a break. And if you're thinking, right, Princeton Dartmouth, I, I would have watched Hell that. Hell yeah. It also lost out to Kent State and Akron, who doubled. They got 61,000 viewers. Look, the Mac is a brand by itself. The only ESPN game that it beat that week, SMU and Rice, was Mississippi Valley State and Bethune Cookman. That is it. Nice job. None of you. Stunning. In terms of the platform, those those four, the Rice and SMU plus Bethune Cookman and v- Mississippi Valley State are about on the same plane. That's it's just stunning and smu is just we yeah we paid our way but like they want us you know we, smu is gonna learn like they will learn the things that baylor fans have learned and tcu fans have learned obviously to a different extent from smu is that you're small and you're always gonna be small yeah once you're in the big 12 size doesn't matter thank god size doesn't matter um but like you're never as big time as you think you are and obviously, Baylor and TCU are more big time because yeah. they've been in a major conference for, you know, 10 years and 20 to 30 years for Baylor's case. Once they realigned. Yeah. Uh, coming up, the NCAA tournament is expanding. And Brett Yormark likes it, actually. And the NCAA is getting darn close to it on Locked On Big 12. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.